Okay, here we are back with part two. Um, as I said, um, open source is, um, is um, it's a continuum between being very, very open and, and uh, being uh, closed. And the picture's actually getting a little more complicated as we're using more and more web applications like Google Apps and, and things that are on the web. And I don't know how that's going to fit into our continuum here. A lot of those are actually open source pieces of open source software. But they're so controlled by the web people that they're not very open for the end users. So yeah, I don't know what the future will bring. However, the fundamental um, bottom line here for some things is, yes, you can do open source on MS Windows. So even if you plan on spending your whole life doing Windows, open source is still relevant. Another myth dispelled um, is uh, there's a myth that open source is produced by um, exclusively by a ragtag band of hippie-type geeks. Well, um, just to prove that myth, I have wore my everyday shirt here, the one I don't normally wear in professional circles. But um, um, I wear it out on the farm. And um, yeah. However, the truth is, most of us are actually professionals, or a good many of us are professionals. Um, open source software is used by the likes of IBM, um, uh, the US military, military of most countries. Um, uh, the reason that's done is open source software makes sense only when everyone benefits. It's like anything else in this life. It's not totally an idealistic thing. Yes, there is an idealistic component, but it's not completely an idealistic thing that makes no sense. It's maybe an idealistic thing that makes sense because everybody benefits. So how's the consumer benefit? Well, they're no longer dependent on a single vendor or consultant. If their consultant dies, they can get another one. If their vendor gets um, hit by a bankruptcy, um, doesn't matter. They still have the source code. They still have the project. Um, access to code and algorithms. Uh, for people like me who are mathematicians who believe in proof, that's very important. Um, support staff that understands the software. This is very important. So many, um, so much proprietary software is supported at call centers where people have never seen the source code. They're not even allowed to see the source code. It's truly hard to support the software when you don't know what's going on. Um, the right to modify and maintain so the software or hire people to do that. Um, security against product abandonment reasonable and affordable licenses. Um, one of the nice things about open source software is you can put it on workstations where people, they're only going to use the software once a year or every now and then. Or you don't know how much they're going to use the software. You don't want to buy an expensive license for that. But if it's a free license, if it's open source, no problem. The right to use and distribute multiple copies of the software. Well, that's related to that. And because you can do that, that may make your uh, an entire network of computers much cheaper to maintain because you can afford to put certain software other everywhere. Whereas if it was proprietary licenses, you'd be very, very um, um, much You'd only put it on machines that could justify it. OK, the right to build and redistribute inexpensive software bundles, the right to fork a project as a last resort. In other words, if the, if the project leaders aren't satisfying your needs, you take the software, the source code, you go off, 
and do your own thing. So why in the world would a programmer or a developer develop open source software? They can make so much more money by um, um, co um, copywriting it and protecting it and hiding it and selling it as licenses. Well, the truth is they can't. The truth is normally the software is owned by a developer's employer, not by the uh, developer. Um, th thus, if the employer decides to fire the developer, the developer, he can't take that software and go elsewhere because it's not his. Uh, with open source software, it's available to everybody, even the original author. It's available if he gets fired. It's available after a sex scandal, after a felony conviction. Indeed, Hans Reiser, the developer of the Reiser file system, who has been convicted of murder and is now in prison and uh, for life, I think. And, well, I don't think they let him sit around doing software, but if they did, he could still continue to develop the riser file system. Um, I have other friends who possibly were convicted of crimes and um, less serious than murder, <laughs> thank heavens. And um, while it's been an impediment to their career in um, open source software, it has not stopped them from having very successful careers. An open source developer takes his or her software with him from job to job. Uh, that's really important. I've been hired in places uh, at times simply because I had this huge library of software that I could bring with me and I knew how it worked and I could teach other people how it worked. Um, a proprietary software person can't really take um, the software with him to the next job so he does not become more that he or she does not become more valuable over the years. Whereas um, for the open source developer, um, their value can easily increase with time as they develop a bigger and bigger library of things they can do for customers. Developers uh, gain from economy of scale with cost being well, I wrote this a few years ago. I wasn't, I don't know what I was saying then. Thus, open source software gives, um, it helps developers in their careers. I have no question about that. I've spent almost my entire career working in open source software from before there were terms like open source to now. And um, I've done okay in my career. I, a lot of us have. Uh, there are not many, there are very few rich open source software developers, but there are a lot of um, comfortable open source developers. Um, a lot of us do very well in it. There will never be an open source Bill Gates though, and that's, you know, that's fine. Um, who uses open source software? Well, today it's used by, gee, Today, it's used by almost everybody. Uh, your Android telephone is running open source software. Um, Android is an open source product. But uh, Disney, DreamWorks, the movie industry uses a lot of open source software for rendering graphics. And they certainly use Linux or BSD style workstations for doing uh, for a lot of their server farms. Uh, the computer security industry uses open source software uh, a great deal. We'll talk about some of those um, techniques in this class from time to time. Uh, the military, Homeland Security, the FBI, actually um, in um, um, a local open uh, Portland group known uh, user group called Crime was ran partly by a couple security consultants, uh, Zod O'Connor, and partly by George Baker, who was an FBI agent here in Portland, um, um, doing computer forensics. Um, 
most ISPs, you prefer open source on their servers, lots and lots of Linux servers or possibly BSD servers. Um, independent consultants, web developers, uh, a lot of small businesses use Linux servers, school, schools, especially overseas, will use Linux either on the workstation, on the uh, desktop or as servers. Science, scientific usage, uh, this is the area I came out of and I've actually never used Windows that extensively. I've been one of these rare people who have used um, Linux, Unix, um, some sort of scientific workstation my whole life and um, um, that's real common. In fact, uh, in November there will be a conference in Seattle called Supercomputing 2012, no 2011 and um, that's where all the people with these big monster fast computers get together. It's like about 10,000, 12,000 people get together and talk about high-end computing and it's a lot of fun. I'm, I may go up there for a couple of days during that conference or maybe more. Actually, my organization's got a booth up there. And the likes of, well, name your Fortune 500 company. Let's review. Um, open source tools include open standards, open content, open data, open source software, and open methods. Everybody can benefit from open source methods. Um, open source methods. Um, this is actually, you know, Okay, uh, one of the things that uh, is being done commonly is um, people will get together to start an open source project. They'll get together and they'll start something called, a, um, often starts with something called a bar camp. Um, they'll set up a public website, often as a wiki, so anybody can contribute. They don't have to hire a lot of um, uh, paid website developers. Um, they may have a code sprint or something to um, do the initial design and code. And then they get out a release just as soon as they can. Well, um, it may not work that well, but it will let people look at the software and tell them where they should improve the code. Um, they get the code up on an FTP site and get it into a system like Subversion or CVS so everybody can contribute to the project. Um, then with luck they get a public bug tracking system. Um, there's an open source one called Bugzilla and that allows them to track bugs and um, make assignments on who has to repair code uh, to take care of their bugs. Um, Upgrades are produced and released quickly. Um, open source software, things are released in maybe an earlier stage than they are in proprietary work. The idea is produce something, get it out there quickly. Um, volunteers, well, people are recruited to work on the project. Um, developers, users and testers, um, documentation specialists, and some which way people try to come up with a way of financing the project since most everybody is kind of a volunteer the project itself doesn't take um, very much money to uh, finance um, sometimes they you know ITs they make their money selling t-shirts oh, time for an intermission here